Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I am cleaning out my freezer. <laughs> my freezer in my kitchen. I got a hot mess right here, friends. But I do know what I'm going to do. We're going to make some soup because I've got little scragglies of veggies. See this? Just little bits of veggies and some mushrooms. I've got a piece of steak right here. We're going to make some soup with that. And then my son um, asked me if I'd make some freezer meals for him. Remember I said, oh, we're all done doing freezer meals. Well, you know, that's how it happens. He says, mom, I'd love to have some freezer meals for my freezer. So I found this in the freezer. I'm going through my freezers and seeing what I can put together before the, our, our, quarter beef and our hog come or half hog come so i'm just going through the freezers and seeing what i got scraggly laying behind that can be used in a freezer meal well i found some bottom round steak and some sliced peppers that weren't sauteed um i got a few mushrooms and i've got onions that are sliced up somewhere in here right here onions that are sliced up so Right here, we're gonna make some Philly cheesesteaks, uh, uh, Philly cheesesteak kits for him. And then my son doesn't care for chicken. He's a beef eater. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do some beef fajitas because I got a couple of roasts in my freezer that I wanna get used up. So we're gonna turn those into the beef fajitas for him. And with the onions and peppers too. So we're gonna do that and um, we're gonna make soup. And we'll probably make some cookies. Look at, I found dried cranberries. I did not know I had. I thought I was out of cranberries. I got some beautiful dried cranberries. And I think I even, when I did one of my videos, I said, I don't have any dried cranberries left. Well, they were in the bottom of my freezer. And they're still perfectly fine. So we're going to make probably some kind of, you know, walnut. I found walnut soup. Lots of them. And uh, right in here, they're, they're in little di different little bags, and, and it's like, this is a nightmare, you know? I'm sure I'm not the only one that has a freezer that looks like this, but when you get busy, and you're making meals, and you're putting stuff together, you're just constantly throwing stuff in your freezer. Well, it's time to clean it out. So we're going to make clean out the freezer soup, and we're going to do some freezer meals. I don't know what this is. I think this is, it says burger on it. We're gonna make something with it. It's burger. And it's not, it's not freezer burn. So we'll probably whip that into something. Maybe we'll take some, I've got some um, of my potatoes O'Brien in there, like a half a bag. So we'll probably use this burger and the potatoes O'Brien and make them some kind of a little freezer casserole, you know. And this is what I do with my ends and pieces of bread that we buy. Now, I do make a lot of bread, but my husband likes, he likes real soft bread. So when he finds a loaf of real soft bread, he buys it. And I save the ends and pieces. So for, for my um, bread crumbs. So I'm going to incorporate this all into one bag. Because as they get down, anybody in my family knows if it gets down to the bottom, you just fling it in the freezer. Don't throw it out. Don't give it to the chickens. It never gets thrown out. But it will go to the chickens. And I don't save these bread bags. I've got a ton of bread bags. So, we're going to put this in here. There. This can go back into the freezer. And then Mr. Wayne is bringing me some uh, um, breakfast sausage. I get like five pounds at a time. And I just I just put it on my sheet pan, you'll see. And I make square patties for the freezer. This is going back into the freezer. Okay. I've got some kakuza in there too. I could probably... And I found some other... Um, I found some fried green tomatoes in there too, or green tomatoes all breaded and ready to be fried. I took those out. We're going to try those. 
and I got yellow squash that I can put in soup and some uh, Kukuza squash, just a little bit left. I can fling that into some soup too. I'm thinking, that's some kind of blackberry or something. I think, I don't know what this is. And I don't have it marked either. Oh, this is raspberries. Okay, you know what? We got pie shells in there that I can use up. We're going to let this thaw out. We may just make a pie. I'm going to put this over here. Let that thaw. There's more blueberries, too. We're going to make a pie. And what we don't use, we can probably go ahead and make some muffins. All right, so let's see here. This burger... Um, I'm not sure. This this can go back in there. This is mozzarella cheese. And I use that for my pizzas. Um, that's Parmesan cheese. We're not going to use that. We're not going to use the mozzarella. We'll put the Parmesan cheeses back in there because I do use those for my garlic bread. My cheesy garlic bread. So those can go right back in there. Um, we'll use some mushrooms. We're going to use, we're going to let that steak thaw. We're going to use that too. Okay, we're going to use all this stuff for soup. I'm going to throw the potatoes in there. Just a little bit of the roasted baby potatoes left. Perfect for soup. Uh, oh, we got, we got pecans. Those can go into some cookies. We got some extra veggies here. My husband is a riot. I told him one day I was making tuna, ma um, tuna macaroni salad, and I always put tuna and sweet peas in it, right? I don't like the canned peas either. So I sent him up to our local little butcher. He's got a store too, a small store, and I said, grab me some frozen peas, sweet peas, for my macaroni salad. He comes back. He says, oh, they don't have those, but so I got you these. He tears me up. That's all I can say. And sometimes he tears me up. I says, why would you waste $3.29 on feeding these to him too? I told him, I says, you're going to eat these. Whether you like them or not, for $3.29, you're eating them. <laughs> so... I'm trying to teach him that he doesn't have to buy the store when I sent him to get one thing. Like today, I said, I need some more colored peppers, yellow and red and orange peppers, right, to do my stuff. He comes back, oh, they didn't have colored, so I got you green. I says, you can take, I made him take them back. I says, you can take them back. I don't need green peppers. I don't want green peppers. I got tons of them in the fr freezer. And beside of that, our local butcher, he sells those for almost two bucks a piece. You know, it's not like you can go to Myers and get them for 60 cents. Well, for that price, I'll just slice them up and throw them in the freezer. But for, you know, almost $2 a piece, forget it. I don't want to take them back. And, uh, oh, he gets mad at me and it's hilarious. I said, take them back. I said that would be like you, me get making you eat mush, putting mushrooms in something. <laughs> I said no, you don't want me to do that. Then don't do that to me. He's a riot. Okay, we're gonna this. This can go back. This is ham that I use for pizzas, and this is ham, and yeah, this is ham. And I want to cut that up, and even though it's frozen. It doesn't have to completely unthaw, but I'm going to let it thaw just, just so I can cut through it and chunk it up for ham for my pizzas. So these can go back in there. And then that's done. Let's see, we got stuff for cookies. And there's my two bags of walnuts, and I'm going to combine these. Well, hello. Hello. I got a package in the mail. 
the girl. I love Little Village Homestead on YouTube. Oh, I know who that is. Let's see what this is. Oops. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see what this is. Pyrex mixing bowl. It's like the one I've got here. And mine is all beat up and it's got a chip in it. And I got a brand new one. Oh, this new one's heavier. Yeah, this one's a little heavier. That's hefty. Oh, I love it. I know who you said it. Thank you. And you know who you are. I how did I say that? I know who you sent it. You know who you are that sent this. Thank you so much, I love this. This is amazing. I will definitely be using this. So let's see, we're gonna put it up here. I moved my bowls to a handier location. I rearranged some of my stuff in my kitchen the other day so it would be easy to get to, you know? So I'll just set that, cause that's got a lid. So that bowl can set up that one. How exciting, I love that. Thank you. Okay, those are for our cookies. Um, I also found these in there. These were the pizza bites that I made. The little pizza things. These go to my daughter. My grandkids love these. I didn't know I had these in there either. So these, because my son-in-law is coming to pick up a couple of things that I put together for them. Um, I'm going to put these out in the freezer, and then I'll be right back. Also, the, over the weekend, I went down. My, I told you my kids come shopping. Well, my oldest granddaughter, Sadie, she says, Nana, I need some peanut butter at home. She loves peanut butter. I says, I've got tons of peanut butter down in the root cellar. Let's go down there. Well, she found a macaroni and cheese. She wanted that, so she, got, she went shopping in the root cellar. I said while I'm down here, which I, you know, I go down there not not too often, but uh, I said while we're down here, I says let's check those potatoes, the potatoes from my garden, and I know it's January and they usually last till about March, you know, beginning of April would be pushing it, but when I checked them, when she checked them, she says Nana, some of them are growing. Well, they had some long long um, sprouts on them, and I said you know what, once that happens. And there was a couple of them that were kind of soft. I said, let's take all those upstairs. I'm going to have to process them and do something with them. Well, we did that not too long ago in a video. But this time, I scrubbed them all up because they were the smaller ones. I scrubbed them all up and I sliced them thicker, you know, thick. And I uh, blanched them and I flash froze them. So... I'll show you. I'll bring back a bag to show you what I did with them. And I probably should have done a video with it, but we had just gotten done preserving 16 pounds of potatoes. So I wasn't going to do another one and bore you. But this time I sliced them thick for casseroles or for frying them or, you know, you can roast them in the oven at that. But uh, they won't turn brown in the freezer or afterward they're, you know, they're parboiled. So it'd be perfect. Blanched is what I want to say. So I'll bring back a bag and I'll show them to you. See, and they don't stick together because they're flash froze. Let's see how thick some of them are in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I did them a little bit thicker than normal. 
and they, they do just fine so I can take as many or as few as I want out and I might just go ahead and keep this bag in the freezer up here because I might add some of these to my soup which would be nice and speaking of that I've got four beautiful chicken thighs I'm gonna go get them I have to move these these are my cinnamon rolls. My, my friend wants them. So those got to thaw out and rise. We're going to leave those sitting right there. Won't hurt a thing. I'm going to go get, I should have grabbed them when I was there. But I'm going to get my chicken thighs and I'm going to start cooking them for our soup. Okay. And the other day when I went to Sam's, I got a whole bunch of garlic. You can see this. This is easy to do. I just processed it in my food processor. I peeled them and I chopped it all up in my food processor. And I used, see, give it a good bang, I'll come undone. I flash froze these too. But I used a little scoop and that's probably about three garlic cloves. So that's the perfect size. And I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna keep those up here so that when I need garlic, they're handy up in this freezer. Nice. They're little garlic rounds. You can do that with garlic. You can also do that if you use a lot of um, ginger. Grated ginger. You can do that with ginger too. That works good. Okay, these are my, my thighs that are all broke apart. They are not hooked together. I am not going to make a big soup. But you know what always happens? You start with a pan this big and you wind up making enough soup for an army. But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to start with this pan of soup and I'm going to end with this pan of soup. <laughs> this pan for soup. Perfect. I'm putting all four of these in there. Skin off because I'm going to use this for broth too. Perfect. Okay, we're going to put this on the power burner. to burn about the size of the pan. All right, I'm not gonna put any spices, no seasonings in there yet. I have to move you, you won't be able to see me because of the light behind me, <laughs> coming in my beautiful window. Okay, first thing I, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting this. I've got two beautiful roasts that I'm gonna cut up for this as well. I think I can get through that. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> come on. There we go. We got it. We're just going to put these right in my bowl there. Because I'm going to chop up or slice up both of these beautiful roasts. Okay, we're going to take this right off this bone here. And yes, I'm going to save that bone for my bone broth. I'm going to cut this one up for fajitas, so I'm just going to chunk this one. Now, when I put these together, I don't want all that fat in there. When I put these together, I'm going to pack these because this is for my son. And there's just two of them, him and his daughter. So I'm going to package these in, um, I need a little bowl for this. I'll package these in quart size bags. Okay, now that one's good. Look at this big bunch of fat on here. Oh my goodness. We don't want that. You know, it's not so bad when you cook it and that, that little bit of fat on the edge gets real crispy. 
then I can handle it. But I don't like a lot of fat. And I had a friend that used to just take a big gob of fat like that and put mustard on it. And I'd be like, oh my God, what is wrong with you? Okay. And then we're going to slice this one. And I'm just going to slice these fairly thin. Oh, I got to put that in a different bowl. Because this is sliced for the Philly cheesesteak. That one's for the, um, actually, that one could go to the Philly cheesesteak too. So I think I'll put those in there because those are real thin sliced. Okay, so, so what I'll do. is I'll do another half of this for the fajitas and then the rest for the chili or Philly cheesesteak. I got chili on my mind because we're gonna do chili stuffed baked potatoes too. Beautiful, we got that. All right, I'm gonna get my spices together. Okay, I got the recipes for my fajitas and my steak, uh, Philly steak. So we are gonna, we got salt and pepper out there we're gonna need paprika, chili powder, which is up there. Now watch this, because I am short. This works wonderful for me. Let's get a hold of that. I got chili powder, okay? I need chili powder for both of them. I need, um, this is onion powder. I got garlic powder. Um, Thyme, marjoram, and basil. Let's see. I've got thyme down here somewhere. Right here. Thyme, marjoram is up there. I am out of my Italian seasoning, but I've got tons of it downstairs. And basil. So there is my base. I haven't used this in a while. Oh, it still smells wonderful though. So it is good. And I need some cumin and that's it in the cornstarch. So my cumin is right here. Put this back and I got my cornstarch. So I got all my seasonings. Let's go get this seasoned up. Here we go. The Philly cheesesteak is easy. My salt and pepper. Okay. It calls for a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of each because I've got about two pounds of meat. Okay, we're gonna do two teaspoons of paprika. And chili powder. I should take these lids off. Two teaspoons of the chili powder which is lovely. And then we've got onion powder here. Two teaspoons of that. Okay. Two teaspoons of garlic. One teaspoon of thyme. Actually, like a quarter teaspoon time because that's very pungent. I need a teaspoon of two teaspoons of marjoram. And two teaspoons of basil. Okay, now we're just going to leave that set just like that. And we're going to put this one together over here. This one calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch. And 
because it thickens and it helps the seasoning to adhere to the meat. And then after you cook it in your skillet, I'll tell you what, it, uh, it gives you a beautiful little bit of a glaze for your meat. Okay, two teaspoons of chili powder. I'm going to do just a little more because I've got extra meat. One teaspoon of salt, so I'm going to do a teaspoon, a nice healthy teaspoon. Um, do a little bit of pepper, paprika, one teaspoon of paprika, which I did like one and a half I'm doing, okay? One teaspoon of sugar. Um, onion powder, I'm going to do a teaspoon and a teaspoon of garlic and a, let's see, I'm going to do a little bit more, about three quarters of a teaspoon of, um, cumin. Okay. Now I'm going to put all the lids on these and then we'll mix this up. I'm going to label these bags first before I mix all this up. Now this is, we'll do fajita. Beef. Fajitas. 124. Um, I'm probably going to do three of them. It's different because my daughter Susie has six in her family and my son only has two, him and his daughter. So she'd go through, they, they eat. Oh my goodness. My daughter's family eats more than government mules, I'm telling you. And then my son and his daughter, I don't want to say they eat like birds, but they, they don't eat a whole lot at one time. Okay. So, all right, now we got them. We've got the onions and we've got the peppers for the fajitas. So we're gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna see if I can't just mix this up without getting my hands all in there. I guess it doesn't matter. You know what, I'm gonna get my hands in there because I want this mixed really good. And I'm going to put a little olive oil in there. That will help disperse that. Just a little bit, a couple tablespoons. It might seem like I was pouring a lot, but it doesn't. It just drizzles out. Okay. And as this thaws out in the refrigerator overnight before you get to cooking it, it will uh, marinate it beautifully. Then I'll wash my hands and it'll be easy to get the onions and stuff in there. All right. Okay, let me wash my hands up. Okay, so now we're gonna put onions in here. And they love onions, so these are all sliced onions. They're not chunked, they're sliced. Let's see, I'll move aside so you can see. Okay, so they got a nice amount of onions in there. Now like that. Now I'm gonna take these. And I gotta divide these between these three. I'm using the same bowl that I mix the meat up in. I just want these mixed around a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna divide these into threes. Okay. Okay, there's one. bunch of onions 
Beautiful. This is this is perfect for two people. You know? Absolutely I want that one. And you can put as many peppers and onions as you want. You can omit them if you don't want. You can do whatever you want. Okay. There's onions. And here's the peppers. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to wash my hands again. Okay. We're going to set these aside because we're going to use those for... <coughs> The Philly, sam Philly steak sandwiches. We want to get all the air out of these as much as we can. All right. That's perfect for two people, and it's labeled. Okay. Beautiful. That would be nice in his freezer. They look nice. Perfect for a couple of people. Even one person. If you're just one person and you want to put these together, you can do it like this because you can have it for supper one day and then for lunch for work the next day. And it works out nice. All right. So there we have that. That is all ready to go to the freezer. I'm going to set those aside. Now we're going to work on this one. I need more of my bags. Okay, this is just going to have um, onions and the meat because I am out of peppers right now. And I don't like to spend, you know, um, Two two dollars on um, a pepper when I can wait for Flash Foods because they always have them in Flash Foods, and this will be just fine in the freezer. I can always add it to it as soon as I get some in from Flash Foods. So I'm gonna mix this up. Get them all coated, every bit of it. I just might have four of these, so we're gonna. And I didn't label them yet. I'll label it when I'm done. Looks like okay. Yep, I'm gonna get four because they're only gonna do two sandwiches, and you don't need that much meat on a sandwich. So that would do this would do about two sandwiches, but you do tend to lose some. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna make this into three. Because they will lose some size, some ounces. They'll lose a, for every pound you have, you're going to lose a couple ounces when you cook it. So we'll just do three. Okay, so now we're going to divvy up some of these onions into here. And we're just going to pretend that we're putting the colored peppers in here. Because I will put those in later. But I don't have enough today. I don't even have any to go in my soup. And I love peppers in my soup. So we're going to give him a nice bunch of onions in here. Okay, so we're going to get all the air out. We're going to flatten these out and then I'll label them. 
and I will, before I send them to my son, I will go ahead and put peppers in them. Now, I love these, but John can't eat them. Too many onions and too many peppers for them. And this is the Philly. Philly steak kit. That's what I do, 124. I'm gonna put these in the freezer and then we're gonna move on to our soup. Okay, friends. We're gonna take the lid off there. These are done, so I'm gonna take these out and let these cool so I can take all the meat off that bone. I'm gonna let them sit there and cool off. Okay, friends. I cleaned this, I strained this and cleaned the pan out as well. So I'm gonna put this right back in here. I want all that beautiful broth. We're gonna turn our burner on first. Okay, I don't want it on screaming hot. Right about there. Okay, I'm gonna put all my chicken meat in there. Beautiful. Um, let's see. I want to season this up a little bit with my chicken broth. Um, my chicken soup base is what it is. This is, uh, this is what I use. Chicken soup base. Or you can use better than bouillon. You don't have to use it. It's not required. But I do like the extra little bit of flavor that I get from it. I'm going to put one more teaspoon in there. There we go. So it really isn't a whole lot. I'm going to put pepper in there because I love me some pepper. Now I'm not going to do a whole lot of salt because that soup base is a little salty. I got a jar of my home canned black beans and I got a can of garbanzo beans, chickpeas. So I'm gonna put this in there. These are wonderful. I'm gonna rinse my beans though. And then I'll put them in there. Okay, these are gonna go in my soup. Beautiful. Now, I'm just going to start putting my veggies in here with this. It doesn't, anything. I put anything and everything in there. All these extra veggies that I've got laying around, they're all going in there. There's only little bits of each, you know. Two Brussels sprouts. And this is, oh, I don't know, that's carrots and broccoli and, and uh, cauliflower. Now we'll see how this is looking in here because we may put more in there. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of everything in here. Makes a wonderful soup. Clean out the freezer soup. I don't know what you call it. What, everything but the kitchen sink soup? Yeah, I put everything but the kitchen sink in it. And that's going to be good. Now with those beans in there, we need a little cumin. I'm put a good, maybe, this is a three-quarter teaspoon. I'm going to put a teaspoon of cumin in there. We'll taste it and I'll adjust it if I need to. I'm also going to do a nice teaspoon of garlic. That brings out the flavor of everything. And I got salt and pepper in there. I'm just going to give these a lovely taste. I've 
got a clean spoon here. Oh gosh, I got all kinds of goodies in there. I'm gonna put, I've got um, spinach in my fridge. I need to get used up. So I'm gonna put that in there too. And I think I need to put some more onions in here. Oh. Mmm. That needs a little more of everything. Needs a little more salt. Not a whole lot of pepper. Just a good pinch. The cumin was almost there. Just a little. Mmm, it's gonna be good. That's how my dad would make soup. He'd throw everything but the kitchen sink in it. And I mean everything. Everything. And I've got a friend who takes all the leftovers out of their fridge, you know, so nothing goes to waste. He'll take all the leftovers out of the fridge, put it all in the frying pan, heat it up, throw a couple eggs on it, and it calls it good. Okay, we're going to taste that broth. And I'm using my same spoon because nobody else eats this but me. My husband don't even eat this. Mmm, that's good. Now that's just going to go down. And I'm going to simmer that. Okay. And I need to burn more than that. There we go. All right. This is going to just simmer. And then I'm going to, well, actually I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to put the spinach in it right now. I got a few more onions too. I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. Got my fridge hanging wide open. Ah. All right, that'll be good for those onions. I'm gonna put a nice big bunch of the spinach in there. This will really wilt down to almost nothing. And what I, what's left of that, I'm going to take, and I think I'm going to save that last little bit. I may just blanch them and put them in the freezer. I'm going to save them for when I make my heads cut off. I'm going to save the rest of that spinach for when I make, um, I make a nice, beautiful garlic white sauce with Parmesan cheese and, uh, use, uh, I use shell macaroni and, um, or shell pasta and then I use a little bit of spinach in there with it. My God, my family loves it. My grandkids, I made it the other day, they devoured it. I didn't think they would like it, the little girls, because of the spinach. But boy, did they ever. They ate every bit of it. Okay, I'm going to put the lid on this and let this simmer. Okay, friends, we're going to give this a taste. I'm going to have some lunch. Look at that. Gorgeous. All those veggies in there. It's like a thick soup. I'll show that to you. Take a look at how beautiful that is. Gorgeous. I bet you it tastes wonderful too. We're going to give it a taste. I got the burner off. So we're going to give this a taste. Mm, perfect. Oh, you can taste that cumin and cumin and those beans in there. Oh, look, there's a there's a piece of chicken and a Brussels sprout. Yum! I love this stuff. Look at that taste. This. Mmm. Oh. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm going to go enjoy my lunch, and then we'll get busy with more cooking. Okay, friends. We're going to do a little bit of, well, we're going to do a beef stew freezer meal for my son. I got 
um, another probably pound and a half of beef here. And we're gonna put that in here and we're gonna do a beef stew for two people. Okay, so I got my carrots, two carrots, and I'm just gonna chop them up about one inch pieces. And we're gonna put them in there because we're just gonna mix this all together and put it in a Ziploc bag for the freezer. Okay, we also got onions. Those we're just rough chopping those, okay. There we go. Now, with that, <clears throat> these are my frozen potatoes, my thick sliced potatoes. I told you it would be wonderful for soups and such. I'm gonna put a little more in there because they love potatoes. Okay. Then I'm going to go back into the freezer. Now here's my garlic, and I'm just going to throw one in there because when it cooks into the, uh, when it cooks in a slow cooker, that garlic will break up. It'll all come apart. This can go right back in this freezer. I keep this up in my freezer here because that way I can get a hold of it real easy. Now, I also, not too many, I'm gonna put about a big handful of tomatoes in there. Those are frozen tomatoes. They're wonderful in beef stew. Okay. Those go back up to the freezer. This is wonderful, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to go ahead and label my bag and pour all this right in, right in there so I don't dirty that bowl up anymore. Let's see. Beef. I just put the directions on your crock pot. You want to cook it on low, it's going to be six to eight hours, and on high, it's going to be four to six hours. Okay? Now, let me get my little guy out here. I love this little guy. I love these things. My friend never seen these before. And we decorate cookies together all the time. Well, I brought that out because she was filling up the, the uh, frosting bags. And I said, well, wouldn't this be easy? Well, she wound up, she says, oh, can I have this for my kit? Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna just put these in here. They're all in there. Ah, got one on the floor. Okay. All right, now with that, we're gonna do about, well, I wanna shake this too. We wanna do about two cups of this in here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm also putting a package of um, onion soup mix in there. That's wonderful too. And I'm going to, with that, put a quarter cup, my barley sealed. Barley will be good in this too. <laughs> sealed. I'll put about a quarter cup of that in there. Yeah. There we go. 
that'll give it some heartiness as well. Now I'm going to do two cups. Not yet. I want to put the salt and pepper in there. How can I forget the seasonings? <laughs> I don't need a whole lot of salt because the um, onion soup mix is fairly salty. And they like pepper as well. My whole family loves pepper. I'm just putting salt and pepper in there. My son doesn't season a whole lot of stuff, but he does like garlic. I've got garlic in there. I need to put him together some garlic salt. He said that's what he wants. He puts that on everything. Well, I've got garlic in there, so. And I've got onions in there and all that good stuff. So two, two cups are going in there. Okay? And this is gonna be fantastic in the freezer. You know, there really isn't a whole lot of juice in there. I'm going to put the rest in there. There we go. Now, I'm going to get as much air as I possibly can out. And I'm going to lay this flat. I'm going to put this on a tray to flash freeze, not to freeze it in my freezer. And then once it's frozen, then I can lay it on a, uh, I can lay it on the shelf. That's it. Isn't that beautiful? That makes a wonderful beef stew, I'm telling you. All right. I'm going to clean up my mess and get that in the freezer. And I believe that's about all I had to do today. Well, there we go, friends. We did quite a bit for my son. We got him some wonderful beef stew, and that's going to make about four meals for him and his daughter, maybe even six, depending. We got him some really nice Philly steak, um, Philly cheese steak kits. He'll add the cheese and the bread. You know, he'll do the rest of that. This is just the starter kit. We also did the same with beef fajitas. We got a starter packet there. Wonderful. You can use that over, you can serve this with tortillas. Homemade tortillas are wonderful too. Or you can serve it over rice. Doesn't matter. It's wonderful both ways. Plus, I made myself, because nobody else will eat this, I made myself some clean out the freezer soup. It's got a little bit of everything in it. And friends, it's divine. It's very lightly seasoned, but it's got just a wonderful flavor to it. So that's it, friends. We had a productive day. And I'm glad you all came and hung out with me in the kitchen. I will list the recipes with the exception of the soup in the description box below my video. You all have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, friends, thanks for watching.